there's exciting research going on in the MS world. I had an article come across my feed last week that had an intriguing headline. Groundbreaking new drug shows promise in restoring human vision. It caught my eye because it may restore vision by enhancing myelin repair. And the researchers say it may help not only with vision, but with other brain function too. In today's video, I'm going to share information on this new drug, where they are in the research, other drugs that are in trials now for myelin repair, and of course, some information on diet and lifestyle that may help with myelin production and repair. Because you all know, I'm all about things that we can do in our own lives to help us live well with MS. There's good news, bad news, and good news. So you're going to want to stay to the end so you can end with the good news. I'm also going to create a free checklist that you can download to help you track those diet and lifestyle changes to help with our myelin production and repair. Let's start with what myelin is. It's the fatty coating that's on our nerves that gets damaged in MS. Think of it as the plastic coating that's around our electrical cords. If this coating gets damaged, our electronic devices may not work well or may not work at all. When we have an MS attack or relapse or progression, the myelin gets damaged and the signals that travel along that nerve may be slowed down or not able to get through at all. Our bodies try to repair the myelin in a process called remyelination, but it may not repair completely and we may lose some neurological function. Researchers are continuing to search for therapies that can enhance remyelination and restore our neurological function. They're looking for ways to help our bodies with the repair process. In this article, which I will link below, they share that a recent study at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus has identified a new drug, LL34070, that accelerates this repair process and could offer new hope for individuals with MS and other conditions. Well, hooray! Some other conditions that may damage myelin may be aging, stroke, and traumatic brain injuries. When we have myelin damage, specialized cells in our central nervous systems called oligodendrocytes help. Myelin is produced by oligodendrocytes, specialized cells that wrap axons in lipid-rich membranes, the myelin. In this study, they induced demyelination in mice using cuprazone, a toxin that selectively targets oligodendrocytes, and tested two potential remyelination drugs, LL34070, a thyroid hormone mimetech, and clomastine, an existing FDA-approved antihistamine. They found that the LL34070 significantly enhanced the remyelination process, outperforming clomastine in restoring oligodendrocytes and expediting neural recovery. This is very cool. Clomastine is a drug that has shown some promise when it comes to remyelination. In 2014, this antihistamine was found to induce remyelination, which no one knew was possible. Can you imagine how exciting it was to find that there was potential medications that could help with remyelination when they thought it was impossible? Yeah, this is really good news. Clomastine was found to have an effect on oligodendrocyte precursor cells. These cells stay dormant in the brain and spinal cord until they sense injured tissue. Then they move in and give rise to oligodendrocytes, which produce myelin. The clomastine blocked a receptor called M1R. Scientist Jonah Chan and Ari Green at the University of California, San Francisco, found that this receptor needed to be zeroed in on to be really effective. The university found a company to partner with to advance the research. Chan and Green helped the company confirm that M1R was the right target for the remyelination drug. A biologist partner with the company, Michael Poon, figured this out using a toxin found in green mamba snake venom. Yeah, snake venom. The vegan in me is slightly horrified at the thought of making drugs out of animals and the animal testing that goes on, but I've had to make peace with it because it's the only way that we have at the moment to further research. Speaking of, did you know that some of our drugs were developed from animal cells? Avonex interferon beta-1a is produced with a recumbent DNA technology using Chinese hamster ovary cells. Snakes, hamsters, lab mice, and lab rats? Oh my. I will take a moment now to thank the animals for their contribution to helping humans and research.
the team got to work on the toxin from the green mamba and designed a new drug called Pipe 307 to potentially block M1R and get into the brain. They started testing it and found it worked much better than the clomastine. In 2021, Pipe 307 cleared two phase one clinical trials demonstrating its safety and is currently being tested in MS patients in phase two trials. This is all really good news. Just over 30 years ago, there were no treatments for MS, and now we have over 20 drugs to help slow the disease, and there are now a number of drugs being tested to help with remyelination that may reverse some of the damage done by MS. Are you excited by this? Put a heck yeah in the comments below if you are. Now for some bad news. Remember I said there was good news, bad news, good news? One of these drugs, clomastine, the antihistamine, has side effects like drowsiness, dizziness, headache, constipation, stomach upset, blurred vision, trouble with walking, clumsiness, dry mouth, nose, and throat. Yeah, no one wants that. And that's part of the reason that it's no longer widely used as an antihistamine. And unfortunately, the news gets worse for clomastine. The trials of this drug were halted when some of the patients experienced accelerated disability progression, exhibited elevated levels of C-reactive protein and erythrocyte sedimentation rate, along with weight gain indicative of a systemic pro-inflammatory state. And I have more disappointing news to share. Even though these remyelinating drugs are in research and trials, it can take 12 to 15 years for a new drug to go from research to trials to FDA approval. So we may have to wait a long time before we see these drugs become available. Okay, back to the good news. There are things that we can do with diet and lifestyle to help our myelin production and regeneration. In this review, they found that although there's no consensus across randomized control studies in order to support recommendations of a specific diet, they did suggest a potential benefit from caloric restriction, intermittent fasting, the McDougal diet, and ketogenic diets, at least when compared to traditional Western-style diets. Lowering saturated fat and salt intake while increasing healthy fats is recommended. Very cool. Let's start with the healthy fats. The healthy fats are the omega-3s. They help our cells' membranes, including myelin. Some plant-based sources are flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp hearts, walnuts, Brussels sprouts, edamame, kidney beans, avocado, blackberries, and kale. I also supplement with an algae oil, and I'll put a link in the description below to the one that I take. B12 plays a role too. We need vitamin B12 to help maintain our nerves' myelin sheath. Many people are B12 deficient. It's not just a risk for vegans anymore. Omnivores are now becoming B12 deficient too because of modern farming practices, and we don't absorb B12 as well as we age. It's a great idea to get our B12 checked with our doctors and supplement as needed. I'll also put a link below to the B12 that I take. Sleep may also help our myelin production. Remember the oligodendrocytes that I mentioned earlier that create myelin? There are oligodendrocyte precursor cells that need to mature into oligodendrocytes. These precursor cells have their own circadian rhythms. In this paper from Stanford, researchers looked at mice and sleep and found that when the circadian regulation of oligodendrocyte precursor cells breaks down, an array of harmful effects ensue, impacting both sleep patterns and the health of the insulating myelin surrounding neurons. It went on to say that the cells also looked different. They were truncated. They didn't seem to be forming the same as other precursor cells. These changes to the oligodendrocyte precursor cells resulted in decreased myelin insulation and impaired myelin repair after injury. Yeah, so we need to get good sleep. I recently did a video on the benefits of sleep that I will link above and in the description below. The next thing we can do to help is exercise. In this review on the effects of physical exercise on myelin sheath regeneration, they concluded that besides the effects on strength, fatigue, and quality of life, the findings suggest that moderate continuous exercise could be potentially useful to enhance myelin sheath regeneration and improve concentration of myelin-related growth factors and cytokines, and its practice is encouraged to both prevent and treat demyelination. Yes, we need to exercise regularly. I try to do some kind of exercise every day. Sometimes it's walking the dog or yoga or strength training or Zumba. 
moving purposefully every day is important to our overall health and our myelin. This article that summarizes a review on exercise effects on human and mouse studies says this about exercise. It appears to increase the number and development of oligodendrocytes, cells in the brain and spinal cord, which are responsible for producing the myelin coating of nerve cells. Exercise limits inflammation in brain tissues by decreasing damaging cells and brain chemicals, while at the same time increasing cells and brain chemicals, which repair the damage. So if we exercise regularly, we may help ourselves to increase myelin production and reduce inflammation. Cool. A vitamin D may help too. In this study from 2023, they found that the active form of vitamin D has a range of neuroprotective properties, which may be important in remyelination and or the prevention of demyelination. The most notable findings relevant to MS is that it promotes stem cell proliferation and drives the differentiation of neural stem cells into oligodendrocytes, which carry out remyelination. There are those oligodendrocytes again. We kind of love them, don't we? Definitely talk with your neurologist about getting your vitamin D levels checked and supplementing if needed. Getting out into the sun is the best way for our bodies to produce vitamin D, but that's not always possible when the weather is cold and snowy like it is here right now. This is the vitamin D that I take, and I'll link it below if you'd like to check it out. We live in amazing times. There's so much research going on into drugs and lifestyle changes that can help us to live well with our MS. Have you made any diet and lifestyle changes to help you live well with your MS? Let me know in the comments below. To get your free checklist of things that you can do that may help protect your myelin or may help with remyelination, see the link in the comments and in the description below. To see more on brain health and things that you can do to avoid hurting your brain, watch this video next. And until next time, be well.